flames from the south climbs over the Canada-US border. Tens of millions of people in Canada and the US are being urged to wear a mask or stay inside as a massive body of smoke swirls over the northeast. With the fire just four kilometres away, residents of more than 700 homes were forced to evacuate. Parliament Hill barely visible in this drone shot of downtown Ottawa. This is what an international wildfire crisis looks like on the ground and in the air. Nova Scotia is grappling with historic flooding as torrential rains sweep across the province this weekend. Some areas have seen more than 200 millimeters of rainfall in just a few hours. Rivers and streams are overflowing and flash flooding has made some major roadways impassable. Canada's historic and devastating wildfire season has been polluting air in Minnesota, Wisconsin and across much of our country. Robberies, which is defined as theft with violence, increased 32% from 2021 to 2022. Auto theft has increased 47%. The murder rate has increased 114%. It doubled year over year from 2021 to 2022. And I know we've got a lot of first responders in the room and thank you for being alive at this time, navigating a very complex environment and society that we live in. In every city you can think of, there are those that were born in that city, some were called to that city, and you have the last group that were pushed into the city because of whatever God was doing in that place and time. I believe right now we're in a place and time and the moment has to be seized for Calvary's sake. In this time and season, there's a special work God is doing. I'm all in. We're so excited to be here, man. I was raised to believe in God and prayer for me has been healing. It's been healing for me when work has been difficult. Don't stop praying for us. Don't stop praying for us. I was aware of what was going on in the city and in Canada. It was last year I ran for the mayor of my city. Hello, Hamilton. My name is Solomon Iquiu, and I'm running to be your next mayor. People thought I was crazy. He had lost his mind. I'm always moved when I hear God keep our land glorious and free in our national anthem. There are things God calls us to do. He never tells us the destination. He only reveals the journey, right? When I ran for mayor, I know one thing though. I wanted to be God's hand and feet. I wanted to see change in this land. As we move into a time of prayer and fellowship, let us remember the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross on Calvary and reflect on his message of love, peace, joy, hope, and work in a unity to build and bless our glorious nation of Canada. You know what? There's a lot of issues facing Canada. And uh, I'm in politics and I believe that Canadians should be involved in, um, in making our country better. But at the same time, I don't think that politics is the answer. I believe the only way that we can get Canada back on track to make Canada glorious and free again is really to turn to God. And there are many things that we need to change in this country. There's a lack of trust in our public institutions. There's a lack of um, care and concern for our fellow Canadians. There's an increase in selfishness. There's an increase in crime. There's an increase in, in um, uh, inflation. And, you know, there, there, are, there are practical things that we can do to solve these issues. But at the end of the day, um, there's no law that can make a selfish person compassionate. There's no law that can make a um, person that's only concerned for themselves to care for somebody else. And that's why we need God to revitalize the hearts and minds of Canadians in this country. And I believe that this, these movements that we're seeing where people are seeking the Lord, where they're looking for guidance from God, these are, these are the only things that are going to make the practical changes that we need in Canada. Of course, there's there's many um, things that we need to do uh, on a day-to-day -day level to bring this country back to where it needs to be. But without, uh, without the fear of God, without the, the memory of the historical uh, circumstances that brought Canada into being, we're never going to be able to have Canada reach its first potential. And that's why in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is a document that is a constitutional document in Canada, the very preamble says that Canada is based on 
the supremacy of God and the rule of law. And these are two foundational principles that have made Canada what it is, and yet uh, a lot of those principles are deteriorating. And by focusing on bringing God back into Canada, that is exactly where we need to start. Rick Curry, a revivalist from the Asbury Revival, we all heard about it uh, taking place in the U.S. and Kentucky. Over the past week and a half, national outlets and people from all over the country have came to experience the movement in the small Kentucky town. People in the room said they could feel a presence, a spirit, they said, that made them feel joyful and liberated. And so they stayed. The church service never ended. What began as a routine chapel service at Asbury University has turned into something much bigger. We didn't fully understand what was happening at Asbury, and we don't really understand it now. We're not sure anyone does understand it. I met Solomon uh, actually at Asbury University during that great outpouring in the month of February 2023. Actually, I was downstairs in the basement of Hughes Auditorium right there on the beautiful campus of Asbury in a little town called Wilmore, Kentucky. And I was in the basement of that building and uh, in a room that had been set up for prayer and intercession uh, all throughout the day and even the night. And uh, I was in that room and then suddenly uh, Solomon walks in. They had just made the trek down from Canada to Kentucky to get in on this move of God. And so Solomon and I actually met for the first time right there in the basement of Hughes Auditorium uh, in the prayer and intercession room. When Solomon came in, he came in very excited uh, because they had driven down from Ontario and uh, their trip should have taken, I don't know, eight and a half or nine hours, but it ended up taking about 14 hours or so, as I recall, really because they were ministering the entire way down there. So the first thing that I began to hear Solomon talk about was winning the lost, making disciples, and seeing miracles happen. So I want to just take a couple of minutes really to explain to you why in the world I'm here. I knew nothing about Hamilton. Uh, I had never been to Hamilton. Uh, I had only been to Canada one time before. I knew very little about Canada itself. So it was in 2013 that one night on a very kind of normal night, uh, go to bed and I begin to have this remarkable dream. The amazing thing about dreams is anything can happen. And in this dream, it was interesting because I saw tribes and nations and generations and people and neighbors actually coming together and there's a remarkable hope that was filling their hearts and an outpouring of love filled the land. And I knew in that dream that I was watching a most spectacular thing unfold, which was in fact the awakening of nations and the renewing of a human heart by an outpouring of the love of God. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. So we're praying that these prayers that have gone up are being are being noted in heaven and the prayers that are continuing to go up that are going to go up on July 1st the church needs to go beyond the four walls. That's who we are. You know, we've we've come we've confined ourselves to worshiping once a week on a Sunday and asking people to come into the building, but I believe that the Book of Acts church was a church that was out there was in the, in the midst of, of government, was in the midst of society, business, in the marketplace. And so we really want to see Jesus in the city and we want to be Jesus in the city. We believe that a lot's going to be happening in the spiritual realm. We are the preservation, we are the salt of the earth. And I believe we're preserving um, the people of this earth right now. After the Asbury revival began to happen, one day I was praying over the nations my wife got me a little globe. It's battery operated. It's not fancy at all, but it's a little globe and you turn it on and it just spins round and round. I was in my office one day and I was just praying for the nations of the earth. No nation particularly, just praying for the nations. And then suddenly as I was praying, 
Lord, what are you doing in Asia and Europe, Africa? What are you saying about the nations? And suddenly I heard the Lord say to me, it came out of nowhere. I was totally not suspecting it at all. But the Lord said to me, oh, Canada, my beloved, Oh, Canada, my beloved. It felt empathetic, beautiful, deep. Oh, Canada. Abba Father, every good and perfect gift comes from you. The city looks like, uh, you know, it looks like things are dead right now, and it looks like we're in a hopeless situation. Of course, we want to see change, and we look to our politicians, we look to our, our churches to see things turn up, uh, see things change. But I believe, I'm convinced, only God can heal this land. This is why we're positioning ourselves to humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, seek His face, that our land will be healed. says, Behold, I knock at the door. If anyone hears me, you open the door, I will come and feast with you. Revival is being receptive to the person of Jesus Christ. Revival is being awakened to the reality of who Jesus is. So many people are sleeping right now, but God is in the business of waking people up. I think there is hope for the church in the city, but I also understand the, the warfare it's facing. I also understand the challenges that the churches are facing in the city. But I would say that there's hope. I see the potential. I believe there are churches who are stepping up to the challenge. I believe there are churches who are being equipped for the time we're in. We had partner churches that opened up the doors to really collaborate with us. So we had meetings, like extended meetings, uh, pre-meetings and extended meetings, uh, starting on a Friday. So look, we're super excited to be here in Ontario and Hamilton, super excited to be here. And uh, we have met over the last few weeks, we have met so many incredible leaders uh, all over Canada, from Vancouver to Edmonton, to Saskatoon up in Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia, on and on. Leaders, quality leaders, integrous leaders, kingdom leaders that are all coming together for the cause of Christ in Canada. And we're so glad that there's uh, so many different churches represented here tonight, and uh, we're really grateful that you've come. I'm uh, really grateful for the support that we're feeling from our American brothers and sisters that are here. When you're a smaller country next to a bigger country, you pay attention to what's going on next door. And, um, and, and so it's so wonderful to just feel that love and those prayers coming back, see you traveling up here, sacrificing to come and, and just pouring yourself out. And we're just, we're grateful, are we not grateful for all that they're doing? And it's been a remarkable thing to see. And when Solomon invited us to come here to Ontario and Hamilton, to be a part of this God to heal our land, amazing gathering. Um, it, when he invited us to come, we just knew that our heart was compelling us to come. And so we came into Hamilton, we're super excited. We love to partner with leaders like Solomon, whose heart is for the harvest, whose heart is for unity, whose heart is to see churches and pastors lifted up and encouraged. And I believe that tomorrow, 
I believe that this event with God Heal Our Land is going to be a remarkable turning point in Canada. You know, it uh, started with the whole Asbury team, George and the rest of the team that had come up uh, a number of weeks back. There were people who did not really know who we were. People had questions. People who said things like, who are you? Who are these guys, right? My message to them, my encouragement to them is, as you can see, we had no ulterior motive. No, I, I need you, brother. I have to do this. I know, I know, I know that you are, you know, you men of God, I have to do this, okay? Not right over here with me, yeah, yeah. When God asks a question, there's a need for a reaction. It's an invitation to be a part of what he's doing. This has been, like I said, it's God's story, and we get to be a part of what he's doing, an adventure with his Holy Spirit. Quiero darle gracias a Dios por este hombre. I want to give thanks to God for this man. Amen. Lo que él se atrevió a hacer. What he dared to do. Nadie se había atrevido a hacer. Nobody else had dared to do. I took some time to pray, to seek the Lord. Uh, Lord, if this is you, you need to make it clear to me, right? I I'm a guy that likes to know that I know that is the Lord. And there are times I like to step out in faith. It's because the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yo me estaba bañando para venirme. And while I was showering before coming here. Cuando Dios me dio una palabra para este hombre. When the Lord gave me a word for this man. El Señor me dijo. The Lord said to me. Muchos. Many. Han querido hacer. Have wanted to do. Lo que yo te he llamado a hacer a ti. What I've called you to do. Pero yo he conocido tu corazón. But I've known your heart. Conozco tu sinceridad, I know your sincerity, tu humildad, your humility, y tu amor por mí. and your love for me. El Señor dice, the Lord says en el camino no fue fácil. that the path was not easy. Hubieron muchos momentos there were many moments donde el estrés fue fuerte. where the stress was very powerful. Pero te sostuvo but he sustained el you saber knowing que yo te había llamado. that he had called you. Dice el Señor, the Lord says, muchos Many Dijeron, said, no podemos creerlo. We can't believe it. Él no va a poder hacerlo. He's not going to be able to Muchos do it. Te dieron la espalda. Many turned their backs on Porque you. Dijeron, because they said, ¿Quién es este hombre? Who is this man? No le conocemos. We don't know who he is. No tiene una mega church. He doesn't have a mega church. No tiene un ministerio de muchos años. He doesn't have a ministry for Pero many el Señor years. Dice, But the Lord yo says, te he escogido. I've chosen you. Yo te he escogido I've chosen you. Para tiempo con for these times, Dice el Señor, the Lord says, no te desanimes do not get discouraged que no, by those that said no to you yo he because gente I've lifted up people contigo, to work with you, para estar contigo, to be with you todo momento, at all times, para tus brazos, to lift up your arms lo que yo te he a hacer, because what I've called no you to terminado. do is not finished. Solo es el it's todavía. just the beginning. Mi gloria como you nunca will see my glory like never before. You will see my favor like never before. I will connect you with people. People that will lift you up. People that will help you. People that will finance your dreams. The Lord says, because I know your heart, I have seen your humility. And the Lord says, I'm going to place you with great ones. With powerful con gente ones, de mucha with people of great Voy a poner influence, gracia I will place grace favor sobre ti and favor en over esta you nación, in this nation y el mundo entero, and the entire va a world will know tu nombre, your name por lo que yo voy a hacer, by what I will do a de ti. through you. Gracias, Espíritu Thank Santo. you, Holy Spirit. Gracias, Jesús. Well, as long as I lived here, um, in 20-some years, I, uh, I've never seen anything to this magnitude uh, come to fruition. So uh, it's, it's got to be pretty exciting. It's a world-class stadium. We had the um, Pan Am Games here a couple of years ago, and uh, we've had uh, some big uh, ticket uh, concerts here, and uh, we've had all kinds of things here. We just uh, never had anything like this. 
also lived on the street when I was growing up as well. And even growing up here at the age of nine, uh, we never had anything like this then either. I'm very uh, touched uh, emotionally to see that uh, that this uh, something like this could happen, that we could all come together as a one, you know, to uh, to uh, uh, pray over our city and our country. Vamos a preparar este día. So we're going to prepare this day. Y la mejor forma de hacerlo es orando. And the best way to do that is by praying. Para que el Espíritu Santo cubra este lugar. So that the Holy Spirit covers this place. Y cubra cada una de las personas que estamos aquí esta mañana. And covers every person that's here. Today. Creemos que este día va a cambiar la historia de esta ciudad y esta nación. We believe that this is going to change the history of this city and this nation. Así que vamos a orar para que el Espíritu del Señor tome control total. So we're going to pray so that the Holy Spirit takes complete control Amen. Father, yes. in the name of Jesus, Father in the name of Jesus te damos gracias esta mañana. we give you thanks this morning Honramos tu nombre y te bendecimos. we honor your name and we bless Padre, you este lugar ahora se transforma. Father this place now transforms into your temple where you will move Padre, bendecimos todas las personas que van a venir. Father, we bless every person that is coming. Declaramos que cada una persona que entra a este estadio. We declare that every person that enters into this stadium. Su vida va a ser transformada y cambiada. Their lives will be changed and transformed. Por el poder de tu Espíritu. By the power of your Spirit. Padre, todo cuerpo enfermo se sana. Father, every sick body is healed. Toda atadura se va. All bondages are gone. Father, en el nombre de Jesús Father, in the name of Jesus, declaramos tu gloria sobre este estadio we declare your glory over this stadium, sobre cada vida que va a llegar este día over every life that is coming today. atamos toda oposición del enemigo we bind every opposition of the enemy. y declaramos tu gloria en este lugar and we declare your glory in this place. cielos abiertos en esta mañana Open heavens this morning. cielos abiertos en este día Open heavens today. tu gloria desciende a este lugar Glory descends over this place. Tu presencia ministra cada vida Father, en este your día. presence ministers every life. Declaramos tu gloria. We declare your y glory tu poder and your power en este día. on this day. En el nombre de Jesús. In the name of Jesus. La gloria es para ti. The glory is La gloria es para ti. The glory is for you. So we're really excited to be here at the stadium today. You know, last night we had a really a great kind of pre-gathering rally at a local church. And I just thought it was really incredible to see the pastors last night come together and all of that and really have some great anticipation for today. I think for me and maybe a lot of others, we woke up with a great deal of anticipation and excitement today. Everybody's been watching the weather. My wife reminded me of the weather. So I am concerned about some rotation with this storm. So uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. If you are in these areas, get into an interior room and into a basement if uh, you have one uh, and steer clear of this cell. We'll continue to update you on that. And of course, sometimes people think we think people are crazy. And I said to her, it's going to work out. We're going to pray for the weather to, uh, to be favorable. There was, a, at first, with the weather, there was something called uh, funnel clouds. It would be like cousins to a tornado, right? And then it switched from the funnel clouds to tornado warning. But there's also tornadoes, uh, the warnings north of Toronto. What's going on there, Ross? Yeah, that's right, Anthony. Uh, the heat and humidity, enough instability for a strong cell. We've got a tornado warning here. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. Many of the city events for Canada was canceled because of potential tornado. So people made decisions based on what may happen. So we just felt to go ahead and trust God. Uh, of course, I was monitoring the weather, 
and the day before. But for some reason, I wasn't worried. I knew God would come through. Seeing the volunteers come early in the morning, of course the place was like a zoo, it was a chaos. But you know, when we figured out things out, it was beautiful. I would say we had anywhere from about 200 to 250 volunteers. Man, I'm so thankful for everyone that volunteered their time to just really make sure this event was a success. Everybody contributed something. You know, it was in 1972, over 50 years ago, that I went to a Catherine Kuhlman service, had an encounter with Holy Spirit that changed my life. Came back, revival broke out in the Ottawa Valley. It was phenomenal. People getting healed, people coming, having their lives transformed. And one of the first things that happened is I was totally being overwhelmed with this. I was sitting on a rock overlooking Muskrat Lake in the Ottawa Valley Pentecostal camp, very near to where we lived in Beechburg, and God gave me a vision. It's more clear now than it was over 50 years ago. I had a vision of Canada, not as it was then, not as it is now, but as it shall be. I had a vision of Canada in revival. A pastor asked me, what do you see as the future of Canada? I said, I know what it is, I've seen it. I saw Canada covered with the glory of God. I saw entire communities across the Arctic being shaken and transformed by the power of God. I saw the fire of God burning across the ice. I saw stadiums filled with people worshiping God across our nation. Some of the stadiums had not even been built. There's a verse in the Bible that says, in the day of the Lord, many will volunteer. And we saw that happen. So many people volunteering from far and wide. That was just like, praise God for that. I just want to just officially welcome every one of you. A big thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being a part of this. This is a move of God. You know, oftentimes we pray for a move of God, forgetting that we are a move of God. Praise God. Now, I want you to look around you. This has never been done before. Never been done before. Yesterday, we're in a prayer meeting. God did something special yesterday. And something that came to my heart. I understand this is the Tim Hortons field. And we're so thankful that they allowed us to use this space today. Praise God. Thank you. And something the Lord was reminding me was today, Remember this place as holy ground. Yes. Where he brings his people together to seek his face. What an awesome privilege to call upon our Father in heaven. Let's make the most of this moment and we get to adventure with Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Zora, you got it. Thank you. What I want you to do is look around the room here right now. 
Don't just look at the faces of the people that you came with. Look at the faces of other people that you don't even know. And remember, remember who they are. Because I believe that every single one of us are here for such a time as this. In all of history, you are here for this. Right here, right now, right today. And what I also believe, if you remember these faces of the people that are here a part of this, not too long from now, we're going to be standing in glory in front of a sea of faces, millions of faces that we don't even recognize. And in that crowd, you're going to see somebody, hey, I saw you. You were there that weekend, right? You were there on that weekend in Hamilton. I saw you in the midst of the millions of people that we're going to see. We're going to see faces that we recognize. The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Everybody needs Jesus. Whether they look like businessmen, whether they look like they're homeless, you don't know. Invite them, because the blood of Jesus is flowing, and people are going to be healed. They're going to be healed of past pain and trauma. And all pain and trauma is going to be able to leave people today. And you get to be the hands and feet of Jesus to bring them in here. Your part is so important. It is critical. It is crucial. We couldn't do this without any, every one of you. So be encouraged. Know that you are important. Know that your role here is very important. And go bring them in. Bring them in. It's going to be wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful time. I believe that there's a lot of potential in Hamilton, but we need Jesus. And that's what we're here for, is to bring Jesus to this city. Football, they say, is the ultimate team game. Because you can't win it by yourself. The Christian life is also a team game. My name is Steve Kearns, and I'm the team chaplain for uh, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, and I came into this role as, um, well, I was a player first and then kind of just flipped to the other side uh, as, as the chaplain. And so uh, I've been doing this since uh, 1986. So it's been, a, it's been a few years, seen a lot of guys come and go, seen a new, uh, the old stadium go and a new one built. So it's kind of, it's kind of exciting. Today is, is, is a special day, not only because it's Canada's birthday, but uh, there's an event here at uh, Tim Hortons Field that um, cheers for someone else other than players, football guys or soccer guys or maybe even concerts or entertainers. Uh, we're here to, to cheer on Jesus, actually. So uh, the dream is now, you know, 10 years old, this being 2023. But in 2013, I go to bed and I had this dream. And in this dream, one minister from each generation would come to the edge of the platform and speak over the, the, the generations. And when I saw that, there was a friend of mine who came in and he was going to address the crowd. And I noticed that he had a flag in his hand and he was waving this flag in a figure eight when he was praying and decreeing over the generations. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And so I saw my friend waving the flag. I saw the flag and it was a white flag with a green evergreen tree in the middle of it. And across the top were words that were written, but in the dream I couldn't read them. And, uh, but I knew that there were words on top of that tree. Later on, I would begin to discover that in fact the words were an appeal to heaven. But when I saw the flag, I didn't believe the flag was real at all. Now, the next morning, when I was sharing with my wife about this dream, many more details besides, when I was sharing that dream with her, came to the flag and she asked me, is the flag real? And I said, well, no, the flag can't be real. I've never seen a flag like that in my life. And by the way, in the last 10 years that we've told this story almost everywhere, it seems, I've never met one person who told me they learned about the flag in school. And uh, I told my wife, I said, I don't believe the flag is real. She told me we should Google it. And guess what we discovered? 
This was the oldest flag in American history. And what we begin to discover was the flag was created in 1775 by General George Washington, who was funding the Continental Navy out of his own pocket as they were going up against the great British Navy, the greatest naval uh, force of human history at the time. And so he was funding this Navy out of his own pocket, but they had no flag. This was years before the Stars and Stripes. And so they had no flag. And so a servant of his or an officer of his created this flag. The white stood for the purity of the cause of liberty. The evergreen tree really was a gift to the founding fathers from the first Aboriginal or First Nations people all along that northern border and even into Canada. It was amazing to me when I began to learn that that flag was given as a gift to the, or that tree, the revelation of the tree was given as a gift from the First Nations people. And then the words over top, sure enough, they were on it. And they come from the writings of a man by the name of John Locke in 1690. So it really was a remarkable dream. And in the dream, it just began to infuse our hearts and our minds with the hope that God is not done with the nations of the earth. And I could take two hours right now and tell you about moves of God that are literally happening all over the world. And one night late, I was praying for the nations. I wasn't praying for my own nation. I wasn't praying for Canada or any other nation. Specifically, I wasn't praying for Canada or Asia or Africa or Europe. I was just praying for the nations, that their hearts would turn back to God, that nations would begin to make an appeal to heaven and say, God, here we are. We rend our hearts like a garment, and we ask you to come and do something supernatural in our lives and in our time. And I was praying over the nations, and then all of a sudden, I'm telling you, I didn't see it coming. I didn't plan on it. I, didn't, I couldn't imagine it. But suddenly when I was praying over the nations, I heard the Lord say, Oh, Canada, my beloved. Look, a few weeks ago, I was on a Zoom call with leaders from all over, all over Canada. And one of them asked me if I had ever heard of the 1776 Puritan prophecy out of the United States over Canada. And I said I had never heard of such a thing. Now they begin to share with me how an old Puritan pr a preacher, a pastor in 1776 said that our two nations would never become one. One would never overrun the other. That both had been set in the storyline of God's history for His divine purposes. And then this preacher said that Canada had been reserved for a global end time move of God. Come on somebody, I, I need somebody, I need somebody in this house to say I'm not going to just sit here and listen to this. So watch, but after the Asbury revival, you may say, why am I here? Let me be the first American to wish you happy Canada Day. We did communion, right, led by Pastor Rene. That was just incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Pastor Rene McIntyre. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, let's lift our voices. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, he is so good. Hallelujah, all glory to God. Yes, God needs to heal our land, absolutely true. But he's gonna start heal, he's gonna start by healing me and you. He is going to start by healing those that already call him Jesus, who already call him Lord, who already have accepted the blood sacrifice. But the problem is, as many of us, we don't really understand the power of the blood of Jesus. Sometimes it becomes familiar, and familiarity breeds contempt. It becomes dangerous, and we can lose sight, and we can begin to come, become overwhelmed with frustration. 
with all kinds of pain. We need revival. Every one of us is crying out for revival. And what I believe revival means is consecration, transformation, and demonstration. We need to, first of all, be consecrated by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to accept it. The blood of Jesus is the doorway into the kingdom. I am familiar with abuse and I am familiar with pain. I am very familiar, but I am more familiar with the blood of Jesus Christ. And I have disassociated myself from the power of pain, from the power of heart, from the power of sin, from the power of death, from the power of the grave. And I said yes to Jesus and I got up out of my grave. I left my sin behind. I left the guilt behind. I left the hurt behind. And I walk around and I stand before you healed, whole, set free, demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God. We are about to eat the body and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, the very one who made it possible for you to forgive, who made it possible for you to be found guilty, who made it possible for you to walk free of pain, of shame, of guilt. It was, it was pure, it was humble, and I think I speak for the entire team that we like the path God took us through. So for those who are watching, this was never about the numbers. This was always about those who are open and seeing your heart filled with more of God. I like this prayer, Lord, empty me of me and fill me with you. In my Canada, everybody say, oh Canada, my beloved people. Today, we are just overflowing with donations today. So we got so, so much stuff. So feel free to be extra generous. If somebody wants extra things, you know, you can hand it out, so. The yellow bags in each cart, those are the perishables, like Starbucks bananas. So those need to be gone by the end of the night. And then everything else is, you know, it can last a few weeks, but we want to get rid of as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then obviously, just as like an encouragement and reminder, the, don't forget to share the gospel. You know, the gospel is what really changes people's lives. And obviously, this is the, the hope that we all carry. And that's what we can bring, not only the blessings and donations to help people, but also to pray for them and bring the gospel of healing to them, right? So, yeah. So, I just be bold, be full of faith. And it's, it's a beautiful day, so it's going to be awesome. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you for today. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would lead the direction. Lead us in the way that you want us to go. Lead us to people in peace. People with open hearts, God, to receive your word. And uh, yeah, we just ask that you would lead the way, Holy Spirit. So we are the founders and the leaders of Love on Hamilton. It really ties into what happened at God Healer Land because really that event is not just a single day event, but we believe it's a lifestyle and a movement that we're all called to and to continue every single day. So when we were at the event, I really felt in my heart to minister to the security guards 
I knew that maybe most of them hadn't even heard about Jesus or had a relationship with him. So a few of us from the evangelist team, we made a point to go up to them and just started talking to them, asking them about the event. Um, sure enough, some of them had back pain and neck pain, and so we ended up praying for them in Jesus' name. And when we prayed, they got fully healed. Instantly, all the pain left them. And to me, that was just such an amazing testimony of how much God loves them. So sharing the gospel with them, them getting healed, uh, a couple of them received Bibles, New Testaments. And to me, that was just really a highlight for the event, was seeing people get touched by Jesus in the midst of all of us worshiping and just celebrating what God's doing in Hamilton. Seeing the volunteers and people who have never shared their faith before uh, do it for the first time and see that it, actually it's not so hard. And uh, really it's a calling for all of us who follow Christ to go and share our faith. And yeah, so that's probably my favorite part. July 1st was a launching pad, right? That's going to be more. And I would say to the pastors watching, the prophetic voice watching, the teachers, the evangelists, the apostles, get on board. This is us. This is us. Be a part of this God story. The vision is bigger than myself. This is about God's story. This is the story of God invading earth. That kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So uh, it takes a team to make the dream work. So, God bless you. I'm excited to see what God has next in store. You said something that just thrilled me to my toes. Well, you know, Canada uh, stands uh, for peace in the world. And uh, Canada has not taken uh, sides in many of the world disputes, uh, such as Vietnam and so forth, uh, in, in the past. And you have a spiritual heritage here, both in Quebec and in Ontario and in Western Canada. And uh, you have the spiritual groundwork is already here. And there's an afterglow that I think you feel. Now, people are not attending church today in Canada as they once were. Uh, Toronto was once called when I first came here, Toronto the Good, because so many people went to church. So many people believed in God, so many people believed in Christ. But I believe that Canada stands in a very unique position. If Canada should have a spiritual awakening and a spiritual revival, I think it could uh, lead the world. I think the whole world would look to Canada. And I think Canada could become the world leader in the spiritual dimension.